Coming up on today's episode of Airborne Unlimited, Jetpack Aviation introduces JB-11 prototype at CES 2018, Bell Helicopter makes CES debut, and Zuma satellite launched by SpaceX failed to reach orbit. Hello, I'm Laura Hudson, it's January 12th, and this is Airborne Unlimited. With one FAA-approved jetpack allegedly to its credit, Jetpack Aviation unveiled a prototype of its next model on Wednesday at CES 2018 in Las Vegas, the JB-11. The new model has six turbojet engines, and the company says it can fly about 20 miles at speeds up to 150 miles per hour. The first model was revealed when CEO David Maiman flew around the Statue of Liberty in November 2015. He made a similar flight in the JV-10 model over the River Thames in London in 2016. At that time, he announced that the JV-10 was available for sale to well-qualified buyers. In April 2016, JPA entered into a cooperative research and development agreement with the United States Special Operations Command. By achieving the challenging goals under the agreement, we've proven that a small, powerful turbine-powered vehicle can efficiently, dependably, and safely meet rigorous operational demands of our nation's most elite special operation forces and industry partners. The larger JV-11 model with its six engines will likely be marketed more to the military rather than civilian sector for ultra-fast transport. After the break, Alitalia damages 17th century viola. In collaboration with NASC, introducing Sonics Aerospace, bringing you the Taros Group 4 UAS, the redesigned Tiger Shark Block 4, and the Subsonics Twin Jet UAS, all derived from flight proven manned systems, not concepts, real aircraft. More at sonicsaerospace.com. Welcome back. If you have a story suggestion for Airborne Unlimited, Aero TV, Airborne Unmanned, the AMA Drone Report, our website or podcast, just email to news-spy at aero-news.net. With so much news coming out of the aviation industry, we're summarizing some other interesting stories in a brief segment we call Around the Patch. A 17th century Viola da Gamba was badly damaged on an Alitalia flight from Rio de Janeiro in Brazil to Tel Aviv, Israel. The instrument, which is also known as a VO and is played upright similar to a cello, belongs to Myrna Herzog, the director of the Israeli classical music group Phoenix. She says she was forced by the airline to check the instrument when she was unable to obtain a separate seat to transport it in the cabin. GoGo Business Aviation has unveiled GoGo Advanced L3, an innovative new in-flight connectivity system that delivers the benefits of the GoGo Advanced platform to passengers and flight departments in a small, lightweight form factor with affordable pricing options. The GoGo Advanced platform integrates a full range of smart cabin features, allowing passengers to simply and reliably access and use all available data, voice, maps, and entertainment in cabin management system services. Captain Todd Insler, a 23-year veteran Boeing 757-767 pilot at United Airlines, was unanimously re-elected chairman of the United Master Executive Council of the Airline Pilots Association International on Tuesday, January 9th. Captain Insler will also retain his seat on the board of directors of United's parent company, United Continental Holdings Incorporated. A drone racing training kit targeted at those looking to get into the sport has been introduced by Fat Shark, the makers of FPV headsets for drone racing. The entry-level kit, called 101, consists of a custom-designed quadcopter, race-ready recon goggles, and a professional-grade radio controller. Also included in the 249 introductory price is access to the Drone Racing League Simulator and three months membership of the Academy of Model Aeronautics Plus Insurance. Well, that's it for today's trip around the patch, and now let's move on to the rest of the news. 
Textron company Bell Helicopter unveiled its air taxi cabin design and fully integrated user experience Tuesday at CES 2018. The four-passenger cabin demonstrates Bell's view of a non-demand mobility aircraft that focused on a people-first engineered user experience tailored with an urban air taxi ride. Bell Helicopters innovating at the limits of vertical flight and challenging the traditional notion of aviation to solve real-world problems, said Bell Helicopters president and CEO Mitch Snyder. The future of urban air taxi is closer than many people realize. We believe in the positive impact our design will have on addressing transportation concerns in cities worldwide. Bell's Air Taxi reveals an expertly crafted interior. Passengers can sink into a fully integrative user experience control center where they can catch up on world news, hold a video conference call, share documents with other passengers, or simply unplug from the noisy world below in a comfortable, relaxing space. During CES, attendees were shown an augmented reality simulator inside the cabin with selection of consumer scenarios. From a red carpet premiere landing to several cross-city day and night trips. After these messages, Zuma's satellite launched by SpaceX failed to reach orbit. There's a difference between charting a steady course and pushing for the ceiling. And for nearly a century, Hartzell Propeller has been defining that difference. It's in our passion for engineering and research and our dedication to testing the limits of performance. We are built on honor. We are Hartzell Propeller. Sandia introduces the new SAI 340 Quattro TSO'd airspeed, attitude, altitude, and slip. With integral backup battery, safety never looked so good. See it now at www.sandia.aero. Welcome back. To observers on the ground, it appeared to be a flawless launch. The SpaceX Falcon 9 booster lifted off late Sunday night and landed back at the Kennedy Space Center a few minutes later. But the payload it was carrying, a classified satellite called Zuma, for an undisclosed agency of the U.S. government, never made it to orbit. Industry and government officials reportedly believe that the spacecraft re-entered the Earth's atmosphere with a second stage of the Falcon 9 system. The planned separation of the payload from the second stage did not happen as it should have. A spokesperson for SpaceX said that the company does not comment on classified missions, but as of right now, reviews of the data indicate Falcon 9 performed nominally. Members of Congress have been briefed on the situation. There has been no official comment from the government. But the Pentagon's Strategic Command, which catalogs satellites in orbit around the Earth, has not been updated showing where Zuma is. Well, that's our program for today. Remember that Airborne Unlimited is currently on our winter schedule and is streamed Monday, Wednesday, and Friday, alternating with Airborne Unmanned on Tuesday and the AMA Drone Report each Thursday. Additional breaking news bulletins may be posted for important stories that fall outside of our normal deadlines. If you're watching us on YouTube, please subscribe and do check us out on Facebook and Twitter. Get comprehensive, real-time, 24-7 coverage of the latest aviation and aerospace stories anytime at aero-news.net. Have a great weekend. See you Monday.